الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ما بعد So, mashallah, as we all heard that uh, the topic in hand is in regards to Qur'an and building that connection with Qur'an. Um, Qur'an, of course, we know it is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a book that uh, Allah ta'ala, He Himself challenges. And it actually shows one of the miracles, out of many miracles of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that this is such a miracle that if a person wants to know which religion is right or wrong if a person wants to know which religion is right or wrong this miracle alone stands up for it and it speaks up for it that Islam is a true religion why because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as we heard mashallah in the lecture that was on Friday in the Sira conference I'm just going to briefly summarize that a little bit that uh, our Hazrat Ji gave in Kashmir Islamic Center where he spoke about how great and how miraculous this book is and he spoke about that at the time of all prophets anbiya they would be given a miracle so that they can overcome their nation at the time so different anbiya different prophets were given different types of miracles right you have uh, Musa alayhi salatu was salam at the time of Musa alayhi salatu was salam magic was something very famous and people were involved in magic so the type of miracle that Allah Ta'ala gave Musa alayhi salatu was salam was something that when the magicians saw, they said, okay, you know what, this is not even magic. This cannot be magic. It overcame. It overpowered them. To an extent where in the Quran, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala says, فَأُلْقِيَ السَّحَرَةُ سَاجِدِينَ قَالُوا آمَنَّا بِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Right, all of them when they saw what Musa alayhi salam did, أُلْقِيَ السَّحَرَةُ سَاجِدِينَ All of them, they fell down into sujood. We believe in Allah Ta'ala, we believe in the Rabb of Musa and Harun Then of course we see that uh, Isa alayhi salatu was salam at his time the, uh, the thing that was famous was of course science and medicine was very famous at the time So the miracles that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to Isa alayhi salatu was salam was what? Where something that medicine, a person who was a doctor can't even do where to an extent if a person is dead, Isa alayhi salatu was salam is reviving him back to life, bringing him back to life. If a person is born blind, he's giving him eyesight. Right? Today of course we have all these uh, uh, ways and avenues and channels where if a person who has sight and he loses his eyesight, what the doctors can bring back his eyesight. But if a person is born blind, there is no solution for that person. So Isa alayhi salatu was salam was you know, given that type of a miracle, where it overpowered all of theirs. Then of course Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Poetry, you know, the language itself It was so fasih and balig It was so eloquent and it was so profound That all of these youngsters, little little kids They knew thousands of poems and ash'ar And they would challenge with one another That you know what, I have written this And they would put it on the Kaaba They would write it down and they would put it on the Kaaba and they would say, okay, you know what, before sunset, if there is anybody that can write something better than this, bring it. And then by sunset, something else would be written. And then same way, by the morning, sunrise, if there is anybody that can write something better than this. This is how much they were into language and their, the, 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 the Arabic language, the, the eloquence of it and the profoundness of it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the Qur'an to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now the Qur'an being given to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The challenge that Allah ta'ala gave to the people at the time And this challenge is to remain till the day of Qiyamah Where Allah subhanahu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says That in the beginning, the first challenge, the very first challenge was what? You bring a surah like the surah of the Qur'an Bring a surah, a chapter like the chapter of the Qur'an And of course, no one was able to do so then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dumbed it down. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought it down even more. فَلْيَأْتُوا بِعَشْرِ سُوَرٍ مِثْلِهِ مُفْتَرَيَاتٍ وَدْعُوا مَنِ صَطَعَةٌ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Bring ten verses of it like. Ten verses like of the Qur'an. And not only that, the gods that you so believe in, bring them with you. فَلْيَأْتُوا بِحَدِيثٍ مِثْلِهِ إِن كَانُوا صَادِقِينَ Right? If you are really truthful, then all these gods that you call upon, bring them as well to assist you and to help you. Bring something like the Qur'an. Of course, no one was able to bring so. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if not even that, bring one verse like the Qur'an. Bring one verse like the Qur'an. 
no one, no one was to bring and nobody was able to bring a verse like the Quran. And this challenge is there till the day of Qiyamah. And that, that shows, and of course, what was mentioned in that lecture as well was something very profound and very amazing. That all the mu'jizas, all the miracles of prophets before, they died down with the prophet. Meaning they were done. They were out. You know, once the prophet passed away, the mu'jiz and the miracle also left the face of this earth. But the mu'jiz of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is such where it, it, it proves that he is khatamun nabiyyin. He is the last of the prophets. He is going to remain the prophet till the day of qiyamah. And the mu'jiz to prove that, the miracle to prove that is the Qur'an because nobody can bring anything like the Qur'an. It is such a book that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Right? That's why people who recognize it and people who know and people who have connection with this book, they spend their entire lives reading it. Right? And we know about the, the stories of our uh, pious scholars, the likes of Imam Shafi rahmatullah alayhi, the likes of Imam Hanifa rahmatullah alayhi, where one, one Quran they're reciting, Uthman radiallahu anhum, he would read one Quran during the day. In the day he would recite one Quran. Can you imagine that? Inside in, in, in his salah, from the night to the morning, till Fajr salah, he would finish one Qur'an, completion of one Qur'an. These are people who knew what Qur'an has to give, what Qur'an has to offer. So they were connected with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today we are connected with everything but the Qur'an. It is a sad reality. It is a sad reality. Allah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hadith says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَرْفَعُ بِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ أَقْوَامًا وَيَضْعَوْ بِهَا أَخَرِينَ وَكَمَا قَالْ That with the means of this book, and when we had held on to this book, the Ummah, when it was holding on to this book, the Ummah was on top. The Ummah was ruling the whole world. The Ummah had overpowered the whole world. But once we had put it on top of a shelf where we only touch it maybe once a year, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought us down. The Prophet says, What? In Allah yarfa'u bihad al kitabi aqwaman. Allah ta'ala raises nations with this book. That's why Umar radiallahu anhu, we know, we speak of Umar and the legacy of Umar radiallahu anhu. And I'm going to conclude with this inshaAllah. Umar radiallahu anhu. This is when he is about to pass away. And these are his last, last final words to the entire ummah. And he is a person, an individual who is what? Ruling over half the world at the time. Ruling over half the world. The history speaks of it. Ruling over half the world at the time. So Umar radiallahu anhu, he, of course, we know that he's on his deathbed and he is unconscious, gains his consciousness. This happens back and forth several times. So Umar radiallahu anhu, to give some sort of advice to the ummah, he leaves the Ummah with this one advice. He says that, O oh, Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, alaykum bi kitabillah fa innakum lan tadillu mattaba'atumuhu. He says, before I leave the face of this earth, I just want you to know that everything you see me overpowering and overruling and overcoming, it's because of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As long as you hold on to the book of Allah, fa innakum lan tadillu mattaba'atumuhu. As long as you hold on to the book of Allah, you can never be misguided. You can never be misguided. You can never be overpowered. You can never be overruled. Nobody can dominate you as long as you hold on firmly to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And today we ask ourselves, yes, of course, a person may recite, but how much am I acting upon the Quran? Number one, the, first, the very first thing is how am I even reciting the Quran? Am I reciting the Quran correctly or not? Right? There are some people, the Prophet ﷺ says, there are people who recite the Quran and yet the Quran curses back at them. al Billah. People who recite the Qur'an and yet the Qur'an curses back to them. Why does that happen? Right? Because of the way we pronounce, the way our pronunciation is. We need to take a heed of that and lesson from that. That am I doing it, am I reading it properly? When was the last time I sat with some alim, some scholar, Mulana Saab, Hafiz Saab, listen to my Qur'an, listen to my Surah Al-Fatiha. I've been reading it for my entire life, am I reading it correctly or not? Am I reciting this word properly or not? Or I've been taught the way I was taught you know, when I was 7 years old and 6 years old and my entire life has passed and I'm reading it the same way. That is the very first thing we need to do. We need to learn first how to recite the Qur'an. The Prophet says, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَهُ أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام. The best amongst you, the, mix, the best amongst you are those who learn the Qur'an and teach the Qur'an. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives us that connection with Qur'an, number one. Number two, how can we build that connection with Qur'an is to recite it every single day. Right? Today we have time for our phones. The minute we wake up, we search for our phone. You know, where's my phone? Let me look. Okay, what's this guy saying? What's this person saying? Okay, you know what happened in the stock market today? What's going on here? What's going on there? We have time to give to our phone at all times. But the sad reality is we have the Qur'an app downloaded on our phone, but we never open it. 
So we need to give at least five minutes. Let's start with five minutes. Every single day I'm going to read one, one, one surah, inshallah. At least one page of the Quran. If not one page, half a page of the Quran. Connect yourself with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu in one hadith, he says that the book of Allah is so amazing. It's so amazing where when you recite one harf, the Prophet sallallahu says, Allah ta'ala gives you ten hasanat, ten good deeds. When you recite one letter, and then the Prophet sallallahu says, "Wala aqulu alif lam mim muharfun, bal alif harfun, wala muharfun wa mim muharfun." I don't say that alif lam mim is one letter. Alif is one letter, lam is one letter, mim is one letter. So when you say alif lam mim, you've gotten thirty hasanat, thirty good deeds. It's such a book that a person. That's why Ali radiyallahu anhu he used to say that you know when I want to uh, speak with Allah subhanahu wa taala. When I want to communicate and converse with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I offer salah. What do I do? When I want to talk to Allah ta'ala, I offer salah. But when I want Allah to talk to me, I open up the Quran. When I want Allah to speak to me, I open up the Quran. So when we, are act when you open when we open the Quran, when we read the Quran, think of it as if Allah is talking to me. How amazing is that? That will create love and that bond between you and Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah give me and all of us the ability and the tawfiq that we connect ourselves uh, emotionally and physically with the Qur'an. We attach ourselves with the Qur'an. The way that when we, are, when we leave the face of this earth and when we are buried in our graves, there will be some people. May Allah ta'ala make us from amongst those fortunate people where the Qur'an will come and will intercede for the person in the grave. The Qur'an will come and it will intercede for the person in the grave. Let me just leave with you with one last hadith that came to my mind right now. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith that uh, in the fil Qur'an, there's a surah in the Qur'an, it's of 30 verses. 30 verses. Shafa'at li rajulin hatta ghufirala. Shafa'at, this hadith is mentioned in Abu Dawood. Shafa'at li rajulin hatta ghufirala. It will intercede for the person until it gets you forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This surah will intercede for you until it will keep interceding for you. It will tell Allah, Ya Allah, forgive this person, forgive this person until Allah forgives you. And of course, we should make it a habit of reciting so before we go to bed every day. It's Tabarak al Surah Al Mulk. Tabarak al Ladi bi al Mulk. 30 verses. It doesn't take that long. Maybe 10 minutes of your time. But every single day you read it, Allah Ta'ala, the Prophet Sallallahu says it will intercede for you before Allah Ta'ala until you are forgiven. Authentic hadith until Allah Ta'ala forgives you. May Allah give me and all of us the ability to do so, inshaAllah.